Yo, what's going on, Serpa Squad? Tanner here. I'm out in the workshop right now. I've been doing a lot of stuff out here lately behind the scenes. Some of that I'll show you in this video. Other stuff's gonna have to wait for the future, but there's a few other things I wanna show you as well, so let's get to it. Help support the channel by commenting, liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications so you know when I upload new content. The main thing that I wanted to show you in this video are these plywood tanks that I've been working on. I've got one, two, and three that are all exactly the same. They measure 24 by 24 by 24, which equates to around 60 gallons if I remember correctly, so they're pretty decent footprint. I also have this larger one down here which measures 72 by 24 by 28, which is around 210 gallons. So it's significantly larger than these ones, but they actually use the same design more or less. I'm really excited about these tanks because they're much easier and cheaper to build than the previous set of plywood tanks I did. If you recall, I did the 180 and the two gecko setups, and although those ones look really nice, they're way over-engineered and way too complicated to build. These ones, it's way easier, and I did all of this in a matter of two to three days, where as if I was doing the other ones, this would have taken me probably two weeks. Another thing I really like about these is that they can easily be scaled up or down to various sizes with just a few modifications. So I'm actually going to be able to build one that's four to five times larger than this one with the same exact design and I'm really excited about that. Of course I'll do full tutorial videos on these showing you how I built them from start to finish but that's enough out here, let's go into the animal room. The first thing I want to show you is in this aquarium right here. If you remember I set this up uh, about a month ago and it's doing really well. The plants have acclimated, all the fish are really enjoying the setup, and I actually got some new additions in here. I added nine ember tetras. I think they're a great addition to this tank. They're small, peaceful, lively, and they also add a nice splash of color, which is the same color as the tails on the x-ray tetras, so it's a nice little compliment as well. I also added a few banana plants which I personally am not very fond of but my wife happens to like them and this is technically her tank so I figured I'd add them in so she had something else to enjoy in it. There's a few more fish that I want to get for in this setup but overall I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait to see how it continues to mature. Something else I'll show you over here real quick is with this paludarium. I'm still not sure what the long term plans are for it, but there's actually an inhabitant in here right now, and it's a baby goldfish that I found in the 350 gallon nonetheless. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of it, but what must have happened was the goldfish spawned in the pond out back and laid eggs in the water hyacinth. And whenever I pulled those and put them in the 350, the eggs must have hatched and then we had some baby goldfish. I had three of them and I put them all in here. As far as I can tell, there's only one remaining. I'm going to let him grow out for a little bit and then I'll set him free in the pond out back. Something else I've done is I moved the frogs from their old 40 gallon tanks into the new 75s. I've got the 40s out in the garage right now and I'm cleaning them out. I've got a really cool plan for the one on top, but I'm still open for debate on the one on the bottom. If you've got any cool ideas what would be suitable for a 40 gallon breeder, definitely let me know. Hi Casper! Anyway, like I said, I finally got the frogs moved over into their new 75s, which are doing quite well. As you know, whenever I've put the frogs into the 40 gallon tanks, especially MJ, he ruined all of the plants. And I think allowing the plants time to acclimate prior to putting the frogs in was definitely the key to success because as you can tell the plants are doing really well and I'll tell you that they've been in here for about a week now and even in that short amount of time with the other tanks they ruined the plants so I'm pretty sure that we're gonna have success this time around. As you'd probably expect Samson found himself a nice cozy area on the land to dig a little hole in. He's pretty much gonna reside there for most of the time although he will occasionally go into the water feature like he did in the previous tank but he's pretty much just gonna stay in this spot for most of the time so at least the tank looks pretty cool and it's nice to have him at eye level now because I can just look in and easily see how he's doing and feed him. MJ also appears to really be enjoying his new paludarium. I think it turned out really well. He's got a lot of nice hiding places and the foliage just looks really good. And I can't wait to see how it matures in time. But this is a nice setup for him. He's got a lot of room. And I guess it's his retirement home if you want to put it that way. He's one of the oldest animals in the room at about 13 years old, give or take. And he spends most of his time in line with the output of the filter. I'm guessing he likes the way that the flow feels on his skin or something like that because if you look at here in the daytime, 
he's almost always hanging out in this spot which is pretty cool uh, at night sometimes he goes on the land other times he's hiding under his driftwood it all depends on how he's feeling at any given time i guess but overall I'm really excited to have both of the frogs in here. They're never being moved again. These are their forever homes, which is great because we can move on to other projects and not have to revisit making setups for these guys. We'll take one more pit stop before I show you what I actually wanted to show you in this video. We'll start up top with the 16 gallon jungle scape. I really like how this one is turning out. It's probably one of my favorite aquariums in the room. I really enjoy watching it. There's a lot of activity and of course I love the jungle foliage of it. You guys know that I do like scape tanks of course because a lot of what I do involves scaping but there's something about a jungle look that I really appreciate and obviously that's more akin to something like you would see in nature anyway so uh, that's probably one of the reasons why I like this tank so much. That said, I do have to get in here and trim a few things and adjust things slightly. Although I think it is looking good, I think it could look even stronger with just a little bit of TLC. Overall though, I'm still thoroughly enjoying this tank. And of course on the bottom we have the minimalistic Volcano Rasbora scape. I can't say that I like the scape as much on this one, but I thoroughly enjoy the fish. They're such a joy to watch and especially feeding them. They just go crazy at feeding time, almost like little sharks with a feeding frenzy. It's so cool to watch. Now I'm sure many of you will be saying that the scape looks perfect as it is and I don't need to change anything. And although I think the hardscape looks fine, I think that the plants need some adjustments. I don't really have any issues with the ones that I put in there. But I think that it needs more different textures, things like that to just really elevate this design. So over time I'm going to continue to adjust those things and get this scape to where I really want it to be because I think it's a really cool one, a lot different than others that I have in the room. And as I said, I'm really enjoying the fish in here. Enough on that though, let's check out the quarantine room and I'll show you what this video is really about. I actually got to let them grow out and I really want to start posting pictures and videos and stuff of them on Instagram and whatnot, but I can't do that without having shown you guys first. So I wanted to show them in this video because I'm really excited about it. And I got to be honest, this is my favorite fish of all time. I don't know why that is. I just, I find them absolutely fascinating. They're so cool to watch and very elusive. So I think for me, this is just, this is probably the most rewarding fish I could possibly own. Before we get into the meat of this, we got to go back about 14 years to when I first started keeping fish. So I'm about 14 years old, I'm a complete novice, but I'm actually having decent success keeping fish in all manner of different aquariums and stuff like that. I started out with a 10 gallon and I quickly got up to a 90 and then a 125 and I was just having so much fun with it. But when I was doing research about various types of fish, I really was drawn to the oddball fish. So a lot of my early fish were these goofy oddball fish and I had a lot of fun with them. Them. but there was one in particular that I didn't have that good of success with and it's not necessarily that it's a super difficult fish to keep but like I said I was a complete novice and I didn't really understand that much about it I was always chasing water parameters and different things like that whereas if I would have just provided a consistent environment I probably actually would have had success with this fish now jump into present times and given the opportunities that I have now with these large tanks and actually understanding what I'm doing in terms of aquatics, I found it right to keep this fish again because this is the most rewarding fish I could possibly think for myself to keep. I know that many of you guys aren't going to understand why I like this fish so much or even think that it's a cool fish, but for me this is an awesome one and what I've chose is the black ghost knife fish. As I'm saying, this is my favorite type of fish. I think that they're generally underrated, they're highly intelligent, and they're really fun to watch. I think that could largely be due to the fact that they're nocturnal, so they don't always come out, and they're somewhat elusive animals, so you don't see them all the time, but for me, that's probably part of the reason why I enjoy them, because when you get a glimpse of them or they're moving around, it's just really fun and cool to watch. In line with that, if you remember, I put those submersible lights in the 350, so it will be perfect for viewing this guy at night as he's cruising around looking for food and that sort of thing. Like many large fish, these guys are highly inquisitive, intuitive, and fairly intelligent. This is definitely more of an intermediate fish. I would not recommend it for beginners. If you're interested in knife fish, the brown knife fish is probably more suited for a beginner. They don't get quite as large, and they're a lot easier to keep from my experience at least. 
One of the pain points, if you will, with this type of fish is that it's often really difficult to get them to eat prepared foods. I think that's one of the reasons why the brown knife fish appear to be an easier fish to keep because anytime I have kept them, they always responded to it immediately. Whereas with this, it was really difficult for me to even get mine to eat anything other than frozen or live foods. This one, however, I was able to get it to eat prepared foods on day one. So as of now, I've got this guy accepting Fluval bug bites and Takari Viber bites, as well as frozen food. So that's great because he's accepting a variety of different foods right now. And it's not even a hesitation for him. As soon as the food goes in, he's eating whatever is dropped in. So that's awesome. As you can tell, I'm so excited to reintroduce this one to the lineup. It's a fish that I've been wanting to keep again for so many years, and to finally have one that's doing so well right out the gates is an awesome feeling, and I just can't wait to see him cruising around in the 350. I know he's just gonna look awesome in there, and I can't wait till then. And that's gonna do it for this one. As always, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any name suggestions for the knife fish, definitely let me know in the comments. I was messing around with my wife and I told her that we should name him Bobby Flay. I don't know if that's a good name or not for him, but let me know if I like the name that you chose. I'll give you a shout out. Anyways, guys, I gotta get back to work and stop talking. So until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.